Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Just doing my job. I used to be one of those overachieving, wants to help everyone type when I was a lot younger. So at one of my jobs back in those days, I'm usually hanging around after my shift to wait for a coworker who's on the closing shift to head off together. When he's on duty, we usually hang out after. And usually, once the last customer's gone, I'll help with the cleanup, etc. so we can get out earlier. At some point, there was a change in management and they replaced our branch supervisor. This new joker obviously didn't know who's who in the crew and never bothered to learn our names, as usual. I was waiting for my friend, and in comes the joker. This is at 11 p.m., mind you. Last customer, long gone. Friend was clearing up some stuff in the back of the kitchen, so I just sat out front in one of the booths, waiting, browsing my phone. Joker. We're closed. Why are you here? Where's the staff? Me. I work here. Joker. Then why aren't you doing your job? Me. I'm not on the closing shift. I'm waiting for a friend. Joker. Well, go wait elsewhere. Me. He works here on the closing shift, and I've always waited here. Joker. Then where is he? There's obviously no one else here. Stop being an effing liar and do your job. At this point, friend comes out from the back, and he'd changed out of his uniform. Joker. So on top of not doing your job, you're letting strangers into the back? Me. He works here. Joker. He's not in uniform, and we don't hire guys. Yes, he's a sexist pig, too, and he's never around for more than two hours in the morning. He never meets the rest of the crew. The opening shifts happen to be all females, but there are two guys in the crew. The other one only works two or three hours a day during rush hours. Friend, pulling out uniform. Dude, I work here. You can ask the previous supervisor. Joker. Well, she was useless. Why'd you think she got replaced by me? She wasn't. She worked as hard as anyone of use and was good to us and actually left on maternity and was let go before they threw this idiot at us. Friend. You know what? We're locking up. Unless you have the keys, you should go too. Joker. Don't you dare tell me off. I'm the boss here. You're hired to do one job, so do your effing job. Friend. Okay. At this point, said friend turns off all the lights and etc. and locks the kitchen doors and cabinets. Joker was still fuming and staring me down. Friend then signed for me to leave, and I got up while Joker was still staring me down. For whatever reason, he didn't leave with us, and so friend locked him in. The next day, apparently, he yelled at another girl for locking him in the night before. She obviously had no clue what he was talking about. He was gone by the time I came in. Obviously, he also couldn't report us properly since he didn't know our names, so one day we got a visit from higher management, who then gave all of us a dressing down and were told just to do our damn job. Well, a few of us went back and looked through our contracts and the job scopes. For the next week, nobody did anything that was not explicitly written in their contracts, and it turns out none of us were hired as cashiers, all kitchen people, no servers, no cashiers. Most of us got fired after that, but hell, it wasn't like the pay was that great either. And since the ones that got fired were all teens working a side job while in school, yeah, no real biggie. Not great, but it wasn't all that hard replacing the job. Managers with their heads up their butts usually develop a crappy outlook about everything. And our next story. Threaten my pregnant wife over parking? Enjoy your misdemeanor. This was last year. I just sold my home and my HOA. About five years ago, I bought a 1,500-square-foot townhome condo in an up-and-coming town, right in the downtown area. This is a valuable property, with home prices having increased 35% since I purchased. This was a wonderful area in walking distance of everything I loved as a single bachelor. When I moved in, all my neighbors were wonderful. We all got along great, except for one person. She belonged to the HOA board, but was moving on because you can only serve eight years. We'll call her Gimpy J. Gimpy J is a 65-plus-year-old widow whose husband died unexpectedly from a heart attack. She doesn't have much to do. She met a man online and moved on, and I was happy for her. Talking to my passive neighbors, I hear bits and pieces of why things are at the HOA because of Gimpy J and another woman who had to move because of age. On the board, the two of them bully residents. 
They change the landscaping from mulch to pine needles. They stop upkeep on the pool deck because they hate kids. They reported one house for anything and everything because their kids were too loud. She bullied a woman with MS because Gimpy J was feeding feral cats to attract raccoons and possums near our homes. An animal control was called. Residents did not like her. I got married and wife has been living with me for two years now. At this point, we're very happy. During this time, Gimpy J began spending more and more time with her new boyfriend. He lives about an hour away from our house in the country. She would initially spend the weekend, then a week there, until she began living there all the time with very little time spent here. Maybe 15 minutes to two hours a month would be at our complex. Now at our complex, there's only one rule on parking. Each resident is entitled to two spots close to their building, but not necessarily in front of your unit. And there's no limit to parking spots you may occupy. Close to it is the key word. We have new folks on the board who are all under 40 years of age and the place is starting to get spruced up. We have some friends over regularly and they park in front of our unit. Gimpy J had two hip replacements done and we'd not seen her in about seven months. And our little area of the complex consists of eight townhomes that face each other, four on one side, four on the other. There are eight spots for three homes and a handicap spot for one of our neighbors. Gimpy J started coming back around in January for longer periods, a day on the weekend to go out downtown or visit friends. She started complaining that we were in her spots. Again, there are no assigned spots. We were willing to move our friends' vehicles for her to another empty spot. That is until she started occupying two spots at a time with her vehicle. This behavior continued as she would come in taking two spots anytime she was here. The rules in the master deed say no vehicles can take more than one spot without written permission from the board of directors or property management group and cannot continue for more than two days with permission. This was to account for residents moving in and out. Suddenly that spring, my wife had a medical issue and was hospitalized for four days and on disability for eight weeks. My mom was the only family member on both sides that had the capability of coming down to where we live to help us out. She drove down and we needed to occupy three spots. I promptly let our property management company know and the board of directors know what was happening, providing them with my mom's make, model, and plate number and that she would be here for six to eight weeks just in case anyone had an issue. Gimpy J's first time home in six weeks, we had a car in front of her house, but she had room for her vehicle. She marched over and banged, and I mean it was loud, on the door, demanding we move the car and tried to open my front door and walk into my home. Yes, she tried to enter my home. It shook my dog who peed herself, it was that loud, who in turn growled and chased her out. I promptly told her there was no assigned parking and the rule is one car, one spot. We would move a car out of respect one last time and saw she occupied two spots with it per usual. The next time it happened, two weeks later, we refused to move our vehicle. We also began taking pictures for our records and communicating with our HOA of Gimpy J's erratic behavior. She continued to arrive, bang on our door, scream at us for having a car parked in her spot. One time banging on the door, she dented the frame with her keys. A few additional times when we were not at home, she would come in and park occupying two spots. I would take more pictures for my records in case something happened because of her erratic behavior. Finally, it happened. About this time last year, I was at the gym and get a call from my mom and my wife, frantic that someone's going to tow my wife's car. I drive home as fast as I can, and it's Gimpy J's boyfriend's son and his girlfriend, whom we've never met. This jack wagon who doesn't live here and has no business here is screaming at us and insulting my pregnant wife and mother. My mother-in-law pays XX dollars a month for these spots. You effers are breaking the rules. I'm a tow that there SUV. All while drinking beer. Now we know he can't do anything except scream and try to intimidate us outside. He calls his mother-in-law, who's not married to his father, about the situation. Gimpy J drives an hour to our complex. When she gets here, she parks her car behind all three of ours and gets out, blocking us in. And I'd had enough. I quickly snap some pictures, I call the police, I will not feel unsafe or be harassed in my neighborhood by people who do not live there or are barely there. Gimpy J realizes I called the police and moves her car. I print out all my documentation, pictures and communications from the HOA. I shower quickly because I'm disgusting from the gym and throw on a nice polo shirt and shorts. 
Pregnant wife sits in her rocking chair, and my mother sits calmly at the kitchen table. The police arrive, and we can see them hollering, waving arms wildly, and screaming. The police come to the door, and we kindly open up. Gimpy J tries to walk in before I block her and ask her to leave my property and invite the police officers inside. We apologize that we even have to call them over something so petty, but our neighbor is acting crazy and her behavior has been escalating. We explain what's happening, show them the communication from the HOA, show them pictures. The officer quickly had enough of these trash pieces of crap. He imposes a no trespass order on my porch and will not let her near my property. If she steps foot on our walkway, she's in violation of the order and will be arrested. We watch him go back out and explain calmly to her, and she starts screaming along with her boyfriend's kid and his girlfriend. This goes on for a while, and the officer calls for backup, and a second car arrives promptly. Gimpy J promptly declares it's her property too, she pays her fees, and that he can't do that because everything is community property outside of a home. She goes and marches up to my stoop, where he arrests her charges her with disorderly conduct and harassment. The police then tell Gimpy J's boyfriend's son to go home. He gets in his truck with his trash girlfriend, and they drive off. As soon as he hits the road outside of our complex, the second police officer pulls him over for DUI. That's right, the drunk guy screaming at my wife and mother had been drinking the entire time and was loaded. Police couldn't do anything in the complex, but could when he hit the main road. Both of them were hauled off to jail, and we stopped hearing from them about parking. Two days later, Gimpy J and her boyfriend show up at the complex, and they park her boyfriend's car in our lot and leave it, parked in just one spot to ensure it's hers. Well, they drive off, and we don't hear from them in a week, and no one's home. Since Gimpy J's boyfriend does not live here and his car is abandoned, I call the HOA to report it. They came and towed his SUV. Gimpy J put her house on the market eight weeks later. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.